Whether the weather is woeful determines whether a rocket will embark. Don't you agree? Huh? Howdy, Rocketeers. Trace and Julia here for D News. Earlier this week, SpaceX scrubbed a highly anticipated rocket launch, which involved the recovery of a part of the Falcon rocket in a truly spectacular fashion. The Falcon 9 rocket normally propels a Dragon capsule to orbit to resupply the International Space Station. But for this experiment, the bottom of the rocket, the first stage, has landing legs, so after it's detached, it doesn't splash into the sea, but comes in for a soft landing on a barge the company has floated off the coast of Florida. Which is pretty incredible, assuming it all goes to plan once they launch. If it can make this succeed, SpaceX will be able to prove it can reuse their first stage over and over, saving money and time, not to mention showing off a lot. Like a lot, a lot. A whole lot. The real question is, if you were planning to land a rocket on a tiny platform, would you let a little rain get in your way? Actually, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I probably, probably would. would. We found the NASA Weather Launch Commit Criteria, and it's pretty intense stuff. They will wait until conditions are perfect. External temperature, rocket temperature, wind speeds, precipitation, lightning, visibility, ceiling, clouds, which includes different rules for launching through cumulus clouds, anvil clouds, or even smoke. The lightning restrictions alone are crazy. NASA won't fuel a rocket with more than a 20% chance of lightning within five nautical miles, and won't launch it if lightning is observed within 10 nautical miles of the flight path, or if the cloud that produced the lightning is in that radius either. They also talk about monitoring electrical fields in the area. Central Florida has more lightning strikes than anywhere on Earth except Rwanda, and giant metal needles do tend to attract lightning strikes. But NASA prepares for this. But what if it happens in flight? That would actually be really bad. So they constantly gather weather data, and if one thing is off, they either wait or they scrub the launch for another better day. Gathering all that data is a massive operation. Weather towers begin 27 miles west of the launch pad. Weather balloons are launched at the site at T minus five and T minus two hours. And buoys placed 30 miles east of the launch pad in the Atlantic are all collecting weather data along the shuttle's planned flight path. So when something like the space shuttle launched, their flight computers were sucking in reams of data from all of these live sources and updating the onboard guidance computers until just minutes before launch. Once the countdown hit zero, the computers have to work with what data they have on board to get that rocket into space. And if the wind changes direction suddenly, the guidance computer can compensate, but if it's too crazy, things might go badly. And there have been disasters. The Challenger shuttle explosion in 1986 was caused in part because an O-ring had gotten too cold while sitting on the launch pad. Not a computer failure, but a human one. It had gotten too cold the night before, way below the now standard 41 degrees minimum. Hopefully, this all makes perfect sense. You know, weather's kind of important. But they also have to consider space weather. Yes, space weather! A year ago this week, Orbital Sciences scrubbed a launch due to high levels of high energy protons in the near Earth space. That was easy enough to say. That space radiation could affect computer systems even to the point of damage. So, so that's bad too. Yeah, not good. In the end, rocket scientists are careful people, and space travel is really difficult. They just make it look easy. Have you ever seen a rocket launch? If you could, which would you want to see? A space shuttle? Orion? A Falcon? Saturn V? Oh man, that would be so cool. All the launches. Let us know down in the comments, and make sure you come back to D News and subscribe, and you know, give us some love. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye.